Hello my soccer universe! We had a really really exciting round in the Austrian Bundesliga with 24 goals in 6 games, that's 4 goals per game and on top of that there was not a single really one-sided game. Maybe last winning Klagenfurt was tiny, tiny bit one-sided but it was still only a 2 goal gap. Everything else was either a draw or decided within a goal. And that was really really exciting. We also had a very fiery top duel 2v1 Sturm against Salzburg that brought all the fireworks literally and figuratively that you would expect. So I think we should get right into it and we'll start in Klagenfurt, Lux's favorite opponent because they always seem to get a win in Klagenfurt or um, at least not lose. It's a really really good uh, <laughs> opponent, let's put it that way. I'm always sad to see in Klagenfurt at the stadium one of the most beautiful in Austria is barely filled. Uh, it's not a, it is not a soccer town, to be honest. What can I tell you about the game? Yes, uh, I was a little bit afraid because Liverpool is coming that they might not take it seriously. Oh no, 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 no. Lask actually controlled the game, uh, created a few chances, uh, pushed Klagenfurt back. And then within 10 minutes, even less than, they scored three goals just ahead, ahead of the half. The first one uh, really nicely played out from the back, from the goal. Goalkeeper going over the left flank, a few nice passes. Then Ljubicic taps it in just ahead of the goalkeeper into the near corner. Uh, just four minutes later, Schul finds a pass to Flecker. Brilliant pass, who makes it two in the 40th. And then uh, Andy Irving. Uh, from Klagenfurt, misplaces a ball, placed to young Elias Havel, who had his first Bundesliga start. And he runs basically from midfield down the line and is cannot be stopped and then pokes it past the goalie into the net. And that was the game. Yes, Klagenfurt pulled one back, but Lask too strong. Although I think that goal came a little bit too early for my liking at, in, in, in the 56th. Uh, but I also had not paid that much attention to that game at that point as well, because, you know, there was another bigger and much more devastating game for me happening at the same time. However, Lask get a 3-1 win. Now it's all about Liverpool and that's the big talk. Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool. Let's see how it will go, but uh, they're moving up the table and that is really good to see. Uh, it's not yet perfect, but it's slowly getting together. The other Linz team also got, got a point despite being 1-0 down to Altach. This was kind of almost a really big game for, for, for them because Altach, while still performing decently this, this season, you could also imagine them getting uh, again implicated into relegation as they have been for the past two to three seasons. Um, the first goal for Alta came early on and took a four-minute VAR review to have it decided, which sent Linz coach uh, into a whole tailspin. Yes, it took too long, but still, you got the right call in the end. Uh, the goal was initially given as an offside, but uh, it was not. But Linz could equalize and in the end, they hang on to a 1-1. We have to talk about the, the, the top duel. This was really an advertisement for the Austrian Bundesliga. Uh, two teams that play intense. It was a great game uh, to watch. And as I said, it brought everything. Sturm started better uh, and brought some trouble onto Salzburg. Curiously enough, it was their own fans that kind of halted that uh, momentum a little bit. In the 20th minute, they were celebrating the 20 year birthday of a fan club. With a firework uh, that was not quite up there what they did at the cup final, but something that you rarely see in a stadium, especially in Austria. I mean, this had a real New Year's feel to it. The game had to be halted for a total of 12 minutes. There was a 15 minute time added on to the first half because there was so much fog. I mean, it was quite impressive and you probably saw it on the thumbnail as well, but you can check out highlights as well. However, at that point, Salzburg got already a little bit of the upper hand and then they even more so. And they really controlled Sturm at that point, got a deserved lead through Beidou and it probably should have been uh, even more a uh, goal is from from uh, Sturm, who is a 206 giant, um, made some really, really good saves in there as well. And he was probably Sturm's man of the match. And that despite then, in the second half, it suddenly the game flipped towards Sturm. And it all flipped on a worldy goal from Kiteshvili, who gets the ball uh, 
I will say at least 20 meters, if not 25 meters out of the box. But you know, uh, if you prolong from the corner from, from a box, from, uh, from the text at the right corner, 25 meters from the goal line. And he just yanks it from there and goes straight in, in, into the corner. It's a once in a lifetime shot, I would say. Great technical skill, but you know, it really then gave Sturm a boost. And just a few minutes later, Zakaria from out uh, again from the edge of the box, Sitzbekitis really makes it 2 1. And you really thought that Sturm is turning it around and they actually will take the league, a lead in the league. And then comes 10 minutes later a super contentious penalty. And one that I think Coach Ilse still is not uh, convinced that this ever was a penalty. Now, um, I am a little bit more of the mind that I think I can see why it's given. I'm just wondering why did we have the VAR review on that one. What happened? Uh, Koita and uh, Gazi Begovic were in the box uh, side to side. And Koita is trying to control the ball but miscalled control as well as Gazi Begovic. Puts out his foot like this. Koita tries to play the ball, doesn't quite hit it, and in the shooting motion, he hits the underside of the foot, which is open. Does the foot need to be dangling there? Yes, the movement came out from Koita, however, the foot is not there. So I potentially can see it again. I don't know why it had to go to VAR, because the referee initially did not think that this was a penalty. Uh, Koita then converted and then the game, we had the fireworks in the first half and then there was a lot of emotional, uh, emotionality in there and especially after, after the game in the interviews. I mean, Coach Ilza uh, went ballistic on this penalty call and um, yeah, he was not happy that most TV experts thought, yeah, one can give this as, as a penalty. <laughs> and yeah, was interesting. Let's put it that way. That was already a great Saturday, but the Sunday actually also lived up. In the bottom duel between Austria Lusten and Tirol, uh, Schulz and Prelitz had given uh, Tirol a safe 2 0 lead. However, within seven minutes, 50th and 57th, Schmidt equalized, and especially the equalizing goal, a great bicycle kick. Goal of the weekend, despite the one from Kitteschwili. However, immediately Sulzbacher is re established the lead for uh, Tirol, and yeah, it's Lusten in trouble. Lusten also. And the Austrian Bundesliga jersey is already out. Lustena had to play in custom made jerseys that did not have the white raglan sleeves but were in all uh, bright green. Interesting stuff for sure. Austria Vienna was actually a little bit better against Hartbeck for the first uh, 20 minutes or so, had a deserved lead at that point. And if you will know, want to know more on Hartbeck, there will be a video coming out uh, in, the, in the middle of the week. Um, however, then the game broke and Donis Advii. Got an equalizer just before the half when uh, Hartberg had already created chance, chances and you know they have a high energy style in in a way and they're really really tough to play and if you don't mark Advia he's gonna score and then even more so uh, the uh, go ahead goal came from a kick out where Goli Fruchtl thought he can get him but the ball bounces ahead of him suddenly he's in no man's land and Advia takes over he is running uh, past him and despite all the efforts to bring him down it's an empty net goal. And it was quite a goal to see. And so uh, Austria Vienna not only in financial troubles, but also now in sporting troubles. And I don't really think they can afford sacking the coach. So uh, it's, that's a space to watch. The other Vienna 10 Rapid uh, team, Rapid is also in a little bit of a limbo. I really think this is a good team, but something's not right with them. Because they again cannot get a win over the line. This game was done and does at halftime. They had a 2 0 lead, Mayulu in Querfeld, and it was all deserved. However, they throw it away early in the second half or mid second half when uh, Congola brings down uh, Bamba in the box. Uh, it is a red card, probably, but you know, it was, it was probably a tough, tough, tough decision, but I think he should have let Bamba go and not even uh, touch him. Bamba then converts the penalty in the 69th uh, ensuing penalty. Rapid is one player down and then Bamba even gets the equalizer in the 76th minute. You have to give it to Rapid though, that they get the, the lead lead again. Uh, it, it, it's a free kick from out that Mormon converts for a 3-2. But then they cannot hold on deep in the stoppage line. 97th minute is a 3-3 draw. And again, Rapid win, who has much higher ambitions and should have much higher ambitions, 
are not keeping up with the top of the league and this is a pattern that has been happening now for multiple multiple seasons and you can see this now that in the current the current standings the top three yeah that's the top three from last season the pro will finish exactly in this order again uh while rapid is only in sixth spot now with hartberg and klagenfurt ahead of them and hartberg that's a real good story. Yes, it's 3-2-2 two, two in terms of win draws losses, but that's well above their, their weight. And I think it's not a relegation fight this time around. And then you see Austria Wien. Yes, in a tie with Blau Weiss and Tirol, only in 10th spot. Also not looking good. Upcoming round, uh, we have two top games. The nominal top game, of course, is Rapid against Sturm Graz. Uh, those are the two biggest fan bases at the moment in Aus Aus Austria and while maybe the game on the pitch will very much tilt towards Sturm Graz, I would assume. Uh, what will happen on the stands, that is probably also equally interesting. However, the, if you look at the table, the top game is Lask against Hartberg, it's three against four, and Lask has not won against Hartberg in three years. Which is a ridiculous statistic because Hartberg is nowhere, should be nowhere near Lask, but that shows the good work they are doing. And as, as I said, as a preview for that game, I'm going to pull out the video um, that I already shot this weekend. So uh, that's going to be a quite an interesting one. And I think the series could continue because Lask played Liverpool. Did I mention that? Yeah, Lask played Liverpool and so it might... Hartberg might be the fresher team. Let's put it, put it that way. In any case, that's it from me from the Austrian Bundesliga. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon about more from Austria. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.